Hey guys, David here and welcome to this video. So the Ender 3 is super cheap and it's supposed to be extremely good. So today we're gonna test if you can really get a good 3D printer for under $200. So before we get started with the video, I want to thank Banggood for sending over the Ender 3. If you want to get your own Ender 3, you can check it out on Banggood with the link down below. So when you get your Ender 3 shipped to your door, it arrives in a big box with all the parts in it and an instruction manual. Then you first have to assemble it. But don't worry, the assembly is really straightforward. There are a bit more parts than for let's say the CR10 but I have mine assembled in about an hour and well the instruction manual that is shipped with it does need some interpretation, let's call it. Uh, if you know how to assemble IKEA furniture you probably already have those skills, but if you don't then there are plenty of videos on YouTube that explain it in a bit more detail. But it's not that difficult to put together and you should probably be able to easily do it in an afternoon or an evening. And after you assembled it, you just have to quickly level the bed and make sure that all the rolling bearings here are nicely tight but not too tight. And you can adjust them with some of the included tools. Then once you level your bed, you can immediately start using the 3D printer as it is basically good to go. The first print I did was this little doggy here that was already pre-sliced on the SD card that is included and it turned out absolutely stunning. But it also took a very very long time. It took so long that I was really curious about what kind of slicey settings they would have used to get a print. I mean this print turned out so amazingly beautiful that I was like blown away. It like couldn't be distinguished from something I got from my $800 Prusa L3. So, when I played around with the model myself, my slicing times were somewhere between 2 and 3 hours, while this print took over 5 hours. So what I concluded is that they probably are using a very low layer height, something like 0.1mm, and the print speed is also very, very slow. And that's how they get this really stunning result. So while it's not really a re real world example, as most of you are not gonna print that slow, it is really nice to see that if you give it enough time and enough detail, then the prints on this machine can turn out absolutely amazing. So next I used my own slicer profile that I derived from the one that's included with the new Scuro version, which is really handy as you can just basically click Ender 3 in the setup process and it already has all the settings. I didn't change much, I just like the temperature a little bit and some of the uh, speed settings, but with my profiles the print results still were really great and they took a lot less time of course. As you can see on some of these prints, for what this machine costs, the results are really absolutely amazing. It's crazy to think that just a couple years ago for this price, if you, you could probably get a 3D printer, but what it put out would look nothing like a usable 3D print. But this really is absolutely perfectly usable. The prints look just as good as the ones on my CR10. So that's already super great. But let's have a look at some of the other features of this 3D printer, as the print results themselves aren't the only thing that is important. Now this printer does suffer from the same problem as the CR10 and I guess many other uh, Chinese printers that it is very loud and creates a lot of vibrations. So that's why I printed some vibration dampening feet right away. Because on my table back there where I have the printer, the vibrations resonate with the table very well, which makes it extremely loud. But some easy to print vibration dampening feet solve this issue, no problem. And then it's just a still slightly loud printer, the motors and the fans, but it's not all that bad. 
Now, looking at some of these features, for what this trainer costs, at the time I got it, it was at around $180. It's gonna fluctuate a bit, but you get the same hot end as on the CR10, which is pretty decent, uh, with a Bowden setup, extruder motor. I had not really any major problems with it so far. And other than that, there's a heated bed, which in this case, it doesn't have a glass bill plate, but the aluminum plate that is here is rather thick. Um, on my printer, it was really nice and flat. And what I actually really like about the Endo 3 compared to the CR10 is the included build surface. It is very good. Like the prints, they stick to it extremely well. Um, it also is rather durable. You can't see any markings from the prints that I have done so far. And it certainly is way better than printing on glue stick or masking tape, which is what you basically have to do with the CR10. Now, the fact that the build plate is quite a bit smaller, roughly 220 millimeters squared, makes it a lot easier to build this machine cheaper while still having quite a bit of rigidity. The upper part of the frame is basically the same as on the CR10, while down below it is slightly different as it now has the electronics underneath the printer instead of next to it, which is a huge improvement. It makes that the whole printer takes up a lot less space. Um, I think it's much better designed like that. Also, just in general, the engineering behind it has improved a lot since the first generation CR10. Like, you don't have to use the little T-nuts in there all the time. In many cases, there are pre-drilled holes and tapped holes in the just correct positions to screw everything together, which makes it super easy to put together and just gives it a much more professional feel. Also, there are no 3D printed parts on this machine whatsoever. All of them are in either injection molded or made out of metal. So we can really say that these Chinese machines, they have come a very far way. Just a bit over a year ago, I reviewed uh, one of the Zonestar machines for a very similar price point and it was absolutely rubbish. But this machine basically can easily trade blows with the CR10 and in some respects it's actually better. The only thing that is different is just a smaller build volume. But to be completely honest, in the vast majority of cases, you don't need a bigger build volume than what you get on the Ender 3. So unless you know that you're gonna print very big models, there's no need to go with a CR10S or something like that. The Ender 3 is, as far as printing goes, perfectly capable. So I guess we're gonna have to see in the long term how well it holds up. And I'm also gonna compare it in much more detail to the CR10 and to the Prusa i3 in a future video. But for now, in conclusion, I think I can give this printer a big recommendation. And if you have some Christmas money to spend on a new 3D printer, then the Ender 3 is a very good choice if you don't want to go with something more expensive. And I think this machine is kind of finally the perfect cheap while still easy to use and very good quality machine. Before. I always have to recommend something like the CR10, which is really big and not many people need, because most other smaller printers are were just kind of, uh, well, not that well put together and not that easy to use. But with the Ender 3 and the 3 Pro, which I haven't taken a look at, but I suppose can only be better, Creality has really created something very amazing. So if you like this video, please leave it a like down below and make sure to subscribe so you're not gonna miss the comparison video about it where I'm gonna go into more of which features it doesn't have and which features it has and how it compares to other printers in much higher price classes as well. So thanks for watching. You can check out my Twitter, Instagram down below and I guess we're gonna see us in the next video.